All right, everybody, we are here to talk about the Georgia-Kentucky game. It was a great matchup versus two very good teams. And here's what I want to say right off the bat. Kentucky is a very good team. They played well. They showed that they are a very serious football team. Uh, they did a great job in a lot of things that they did. Their players played well. And I will say this, Will Levis, you have my respect. You're a good player. But if Georgia's defense ultimately, ultimately held the day, as well as our offense did a great job. Our coaches did a great job once again. So let's talk through one of the biggest drives, I think, that kind of set us apart from Kentucky. Um, we were up 7 to nothing. just had hit uh, Cook on the little angle route right back over the middle. Beautiful ball, beautiful pass, great job finishing and getting in there for that drive. But the next drive, we come out, um, we get the ball back. It's 7 to nothing. And we go on a drive from starting from uh, inside our 20 yard line after a penalty, it becomes first and 18. And what do we do? We go right back to running and pounding the football. OK, what I want to talk about right here is I want you to pay attention to one the offensive line and the hats that get on hats. So basically everybody has a man that they are working on now. Are we necessarily pounding every person into the dirt every single time? No, but we are getting on hats. All right, we are covering people up, and our backs are doing a great job of pressing and cutting and hitting the hole really, really hard. So the first play we had is we lined up in a two tight end set, which we did a lot of this game, which was really good to see. All right, we got two tight ends. All right, we had our two receivers out wide. Kentucky liked to play basically a two, two high coverage throughout the whole game. All right. And what we did is we took advantage of that and were able to run the ball forcefully. Really, this play and the Zamir White run at the very end for a touchdown were very much the same play and very much set up uh, in the same way. And you'll kind of see that as we go and get to it. But play number one, we're basically running a version of pin pull. All right. And what we normally would do is we would push this guy through and basically create a big wash up front and we're going to pull backside who we need to. Okay. So for this one, what we do is if there's a man inside of you, your base, you're blocking down. All right. That's your rule. If there's nobody inside of you, you're pulling. All right. So what we go do right here is we go to push through with our tight end so that we can come kick out this Rover, but he actually crosses our face right here. This was a great block by Darnell Washington, okay? He comes off, he takes his steps, he sees this guy go right here, and he takes him, and he buries him, okay? So we get the play started off great, all right? We also come down at tackle and close down on this uh, down lineman, the four-eye technique or the three technique right there, all right? And we actually pull the front side guard and kick out, all right, this corner who's coming to step up right here, okay? So... As we do this, he steps up, he tries to fill. We basically set a wall right here. So we're already starting to create a long running lane right there up the front, okay? But we've still got a few people that are unaccounted for, all right? We still got to come get our will. And then the free safety, we basically said the whole game, hey, our running backs, y'all are going to go take on the free safeties. Y'all are going to win off the secondary like we've done so many other times, all right? So we leave that safety unblocked, but we block here. We end up pulling all the way around. We get that pull right there. We cut off. We get backside. We get there. You'll actually see that the will overruns the play. All right. A lot of it due to the patience by number two, Kendall Milton back here. Okay. He actually slides steps and he's, we're going to like a same side uh, action. All right. What this allows us to do is let these pullers get out in front of us. He steps in, we give it to him. All right. And he starts to press. Okay. He presses really, really hard. This guy plays over the top. We end up turning him out. The free safety is technically responsible for that gap, so they now have two guys in the gap. But because we did good job getting hats on hats up front, we end up hitting it here. And then you see Kendall Milton stick his foot in the ground and get vertical. Runs through basically an arm tackle from the mic, and the free safety trying to come back through and is off for a 35-yard gain to start the drive out. Okay, so that was awesome. We got out there, we pushed it, and we got out in front. We're going to keep talking through it. So that was the play by Kendall Milton, 35-yard run. We're going to continue going down this list and showing you exactly what happened throughout the rest of the draft. Okay, so the second play, we had a little bit of confusion. We call timeout and come out of this timeout. 
Uh, we start actually in a condensed set where we have our tight ends and receivers in, all right, in a tight set, and then we shift everybody out and spread them out, okay? What Kentucky is actually doing right here is, okay, we just crossed the 50-yard line. A lot of people like to take shots as soon as they cross that 50-yard line. It's a place where we can basically – uh, tee it up, take a shot on first and 10 and go after them in a lot of different ways. You saw that first Auburn last week. We did that a couple of times. So what they're actually doing is they're bringing a pressure um, called Saul cover zero. So Sam and Will. OK, so Saul, Sam and the Will are going to creep down and they're going to come. OK, now what that does okay, to create a gap sound defense, what that does is make sure he's the outside rusher. So now that he's outside, he's going to cross face. We're going to cross face here. They're going to cross face, cross face. So now we've got, they are supposed to have every gap filled. Okay. All right. We have a simple zone play call. All right. This guy, the mic, is basically responsible for the back right here. All right. And what we do up front is a great job is we see this pressure coming front side of zone. And what we used to call it was gain. Okay. So we basically said, hey, we're going to take the mic point, even though he was outside of the box. Now we're going to push it to this guy because now he becomes an immediate threat. OK, when he becomes an immediate threat, basically it pushes everybody. Everybody gets on track and we become a gang running down the line, of scrimmage, making sure that we get hats on hats on everybody. All right. What that does. All right. Is when he comes here. All right. And he goes to attack the back on zone read. All right. He attacks the back. We end up pulling. All right. The thing that got Kentucky, they're actually in a very good defense for this, all right? They lose their eyes and they lose their discipline with the Sam coming off the edge. He thinks that we're just going to give that ball to Kendall. But as we know, Stetson Bennett, all right, great athlete in space, does a great job of seeing that, disconnects early, and is able to escape outside. All right, now this guy has squeezed down. We're basically man-on-man -man blocking right here. We've got everybody blocked front side for Stetson to pull and escape out the backside. So Kentucky was in a good defense, but right there, we just out-athleted them. All right. They had a little bit of undisciplined eyes coming off the edge with their Sam. All right. We take advantage of it with Stetson and Stetson does a great job with his legs, controlling the pace of the game, getting the first down, something that could have been a negative play becomes a 17 yard gain and we're on a great start to this draft. So the third play, we line up actually in a formation into the boundary. So if I was to draw the hashes, the hashes would be here and here, and this would be the numbers and the sideline. Okay, so we've actually got more of a passing threat into the boundary. Okay, so what do they do? They align in the normal too high defense like we were. Okay, what I love with this is we use a motion across the field to create the right numbers and blocking that we want and did to dictate exactly what the defense does in order to get into a place where we're able to run this ball effectively with James Cook right here. Okay, so what we do is we start here, all right? We've got our tight end off the ball to our left. We motion this guy across, okay? So we get him into the slot over here. Now it's a three-man set right here. All right, now when we do that, this guy walks down into a rushing position, all right? These backers bump over slightly, okay? this Sam actually works his way off of the ball, okay? Now, this does a few different things, okay? Number one, it redictates the box, okay? We want to run basically zone or a duo or tight zone uh, basically back into the boundary, all right? We do a great job of understanding our assignment. So, hey, when we motion, this guy's going to bump back down. So this guy is in our count for our offensive lineman for us to block up front. We, do, we know that. It looked like we've been doing it all week, very prepared, very ready for it. So us at tackle, we step out, we block here. All right, we get a block right there. These two guys work up to here. This guy actually plays outside and helps us, and we scoot right up to there. Now, as you'll see, the best part about this play was number four. All right, you can say that a lot of, about a lot of plays uh, just in the history of the past couple of years with this kid, but – he does a great job of being patient, patient, patient. He actually pushes here, all right? And what you'll see is this guy was supposed to push and crack that safety, all right? So this guy actually misses the push crack backside, okay? So this safety actually comes flying in here ready to run support, all right? Now, 
he ends up getting back on the corner, which is good. We still get hats on hats. So there's only one guy for us to make miss. All right. We do a good job of that. James pushes out here. He starts to push wide. He sees him and actually slips right back up under this tackle. All right. Or this, this guard center combo working up to the will to end up pushing up for another 12 yard gain. Okay. So not, the most pretty play blocking wise efficiently man to man. But as far as the scheme and what we were doing, we did a great job again, getting hats on hats, making sure we're in the right place and taking advantage of the opportunity with number four, getting into him into a good space. He sees it, he reads it. He makes a nice little cut, squeezes back up in there for an extra six, seven, eight yards. And we ended up first and 10 going on uh, the last play, which is Zamir White. So we got James Cook. We'll go through J Zamir White's last play, which, I again, is very much like the, the first play with Kendall Cook. But let's take a look at it. All right, so now let's take a look at the last play. Uh, play four, technically play five of this drive, but play four that we're going over. All right, when Zamir White does a great job of getting into the end zone, using a lot of the same things that we used with Kendall Milton earlier on on the first play of this drive, All right? So we get into this set. Now, we use the same play, but we get to it differently. That's one of the great things that we do with Munkin is we move people around, again, to dictate what the defense is going to give us. So right now, if you were to say, hey, let's run to this side, we'd all be looking at you like, hey, you're crazy, All right? Then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dudes – on that side of the ball, all right? But they know that we like to run to our two tight ends and two tight end set. So what we do is we actually motion this guy across, all right? Simple motion. You're like, hey, that's not a big deal. What that does, it gets the will to walk down. These two guys bump back. The strong safety bumps in the middle of the field and the corner rolls off, all right? So now by doing that, we've essentially eliminated two defenders front side, okay? We eliminated him. Okay, because he's high, all right, and we've put the mic on the back side of the play. Okay, so great job with the shift. We get those guys to move over. All right, we still have an interesting concept going on over here as far as what, who we have to block and kick. All right, so because of this, all right, basically we end up sending our tight end through. We go down, down, okay? What this does is it creates a massive gap, again, front side, we do a great job of comboing right here, basically coming off of this guy. And this, he actually ends up pushing all the way up to that strong safety. Now, whether he was supposed to do that or not, I don't know. But he did a great job, again, getting hats on hats. But as you see this play play out, we stay here, and he comes off onto the mic who steps off into here. All right? We pull out, all right, and we take off and basically trap here now. Instead of doing it with the guard and the guard, backside guard or the two guards, all right, now we're going to bring our tight end all the way back through for him to come fill up on this corner, all right, or Sam that's flowing over the top. Now, the corner is technically responsible for anything out here as well as this DN. The DN gets kicked out by our guard. We fill up inside, all right, and as we go to fill up inside, this guy plays over the top again. All right, now. We've already told you that we've basically created a highway right here, right? And then our tight end does a great job of falling off and finding hat on hat, all right? So the awesome thing is this guy right here, and all of our backs do a great job of this. They're coached up very well, all right? They're very much so slow too, and then fast through the hole. So they, they get here, he starts to press it, okay? Again, him pressing it makes this guy play over the top makes this corner play down outside, all right? Now we've created that wall. We end up filling up, and he hits it and takes it right up in here. And then I just want to see, talk about how fast and explosive Samir White is getting to that end zone. It really is impressive when our backs decide to put their foot in the ground. All of them, all of them do a great job of exploding through the hole, getting to where they need to get. Again, great scheme, but great players doing a great job of executing. All right, so I want to talk about the defense. The defense, you can't talk about them without talking about the four guys up front, six guys up front. Whoever they put in up front, those dudes are doing their job, and they're doing it well. And it starts with these two guys interiorly. It doesn't matter who's in the game. All of them are, are athletes. All of them are explosive human beings that do a great job of getting to the ball carrier fast and basically blowing up any kind of scheme that you can come up with on offense. Now, all right, this play that we're going to talk about, 
Jordan Davis isn't even in the game. All right, you see that. You got uh, 88 and 95 blowing things up in the middle. Jalen Carter and White coming in and doing a great job up front. So let's talk about this. On this play, we basically bring what's called strong scrape. Okay, it's second and uh, second and long. We're basically trying to take advantage of it, thinking of it as a pass down. So when we think of it as pass down, we bring some pressure off the edge. We're bringing two guys here. Okay, so one of them is going to come here and fill this gap basically, and another one's going to go here and fill this outside gap right here and control the outside. All right, now when they do that, they can come wide. He can cross there. They can do it a whole bunch of different ways. We were actually crossing it, so he ended up coming here and he took it there. All right. Now, when we bring the pressure out here, we're not going to send these guys in the same gap. So what we do is we take a gap and we attack a gap here. Okay. So we're all attacking a different gap on the outside to basically create, all right, a press here. And we're also still hitting our run fits well. All right. So we got a backside wheel that's filling this gap right here. All right. So when we do this, I want y'all to pay attention to these two guys. All right. Not only are they explosive and strong and can push through you, watch how fast they get over and then explode through the line of scrimmage. Now, it is hard to do being that big and that physical, all right, to be able to get into a gap like that that quick, all right, and to respond to that, it's even harder. So you'll see that these guys up front, basically this happens, this happens, we're standing here having a little party and a picnic in the backfield waiting for the back to get the ball. And these guys all turn around, look at each other like, hey, did you have that guy? No, I no, you had that guy. What? It doesn't matter. Our guys are fast. They're physical. They play hard and relentless. No matter where they are on defense, they do a great job. And this is the things that are really going to pay off in the end. Normally, an offense wears a defense down. I believe it's the opposite. I believe our defense straight up wears an offense out. And it starts with those guys up front. All right, the last thing I want to talk about with our defense, all right, is basically the great effort that I saw not only up front, but in our secondary. Our guys do not quit on plays, and this really shows, all right, we had just gone up 21-7 to coming out of halftime, but our defense had just taken a long drive, basically allowing Kentucky to score first time we've let somebody score in a long time. Okay, so we're kind of reeling. We're not feeling great, but we get into a third down situation, all right? We're in the third quarter. It's 7 to 21, okay? If they get this first down, this first first down, basically they continue to roll. Their offense is feeling good. They feel like they've got a little bit of momentum, all right? But what you'll see is Levis actually does a great job of standing in the pocket with bombs going off all over his face because we're in our third down package. We're bringing pressure from everywhere, all right? We're in basically a four-man uh, concept where we're manning everybody along the border and our two safeties are inside trying to protect the inside. You'll see our boundary safety get a little bit too much depth when the back comes out of the backfield and they're able to get a dig right up under his face. All right, now, this puts uh, Kendrick in a bad place, all right? He's basically trailing his outside technique because he's protecting the outside, the safety's protecting the inside. So he's trailing, he's in a bad position just because of the play call. The safety gets a little bit too high. That's okay. They hit a dig, and actually, Levis hits it right on his chest, all right? But what you'll see when they slow the play down and you look at it, Kendrick doesn't quit. He keeps playing through the ball. He takes his right hand, shoves it right through the ball all the way down. They do not control the catch all the way to the ground. Ends up being an incomplete and you can just tell that deflated that Kentucky offense in a lot of ways. So big play at a big moment where Kentucky can come back, get back into this game. We do a great job of finishing all the way through the play, all the way through the whistle, and doing a great job of stopping those guys and getting the ball back to our offense.